In Egypt, family was important in maintaining social order and acted as the building blocks of society. Most importantly, family provided and allowed for social security and safety after death. In the following video, we will examine the Stella of Maya and take a deeper look at the role family played in funerary rites. Before we begin examining the Stella, we must first contextualize the artifact. The Stella of Maya was made during the New Kingdom, at the end of the 18th dynasty, approximately from 1353 through 1292 BC. The New Kingdom was often referred to as Ancient Egypt's Golden Age because it was a time of wealth, prosperity, and power. By the end of the 18th dynasty, stelae were increasingly inserted into the facades of tombs. This meant that the stelae were inserted into the faces of the tombs themselves. The Stella of Maya was found in tomb 338 at Deir el Medina. Deir el Medina is an ancient Egyptian village. It is located on the outskirts of Thebes, which acted as the capital of Egypt during the 18th dynasty. It was also near the Valley of Kings and Queens. The Valley of Kings and Queens is considered the final resting place for royal elites. Deir el Medina is the village that housed the artisans who built the Valley of Kings and Queens. Because Deir el Medina was home to artisans and craftsmen, it is no surprise that many stelae were found there. According to the hieroglyphics on Maya Stella, Maya, the man who owned the stela, was a draftsman. Draftsmen in ancient Egypt were scribes who specialized in drawing. He was a painter employed at the Thebian necropolis and lived at Deir el Medina during the late 18th dynasty. Now that we have determined that the stela of Maya is a funerary stela, let's get a grasp on the background. As you can see, there are three registers separated by two horizontal lines, which results in a total of three separate scenes. In the upper register, we see Osiris accompanied by Hathor in seated positions facing Maya and his wife, Tamyat. In the middle register, Maya and his wife are seated facing three of their children. Finally, in the bottom register, we see six more of their children. The Stella's registers indicate a decrease in importance from top to bottom, clearly defining status, which is why we see the divine figures in the upper register and the children figures in the lower register. The influence of the reign of Pharaoh Akhenaten, pictured here during part of the Amarna period, has greatly impacted the traditional art conventions that we have previously seen. This stela, created around the Amarna period, is relevant to understanding the impact of Akhenaten directly within the images on the registers. His influence utterly reconceptualized traditional and established art conventions, favoring a more equal approach in regards to men, women, and even the divine. Before the Amarna period, we have noticed that scale or size and skin color has denoted gender to represent women and men differently. By contrast, in this stela, we observe that both genders are given the same scale and the same skin colors. The difference in size is more to reflect age differences. The smaller the child, the younger the audience can assume that they are. This is attributed to the influence of the portrayal of Pharaoh Akhenaten's family, which brought new focus on casual domestic scenes. The female and male counterparts had almost identical figures, representing the king and queen in order to elevate the queen's importance and their balance between each other. Akhenaten's more equal display between himself and his wife strongly impacted objects such as our Stella during the Amarna period. It's common in Egyptian art for the dominant position to be considered the right-facing figures on the left sides of the scenes. In the Old Kingdom, only men or the divine were in the dominant position, whereas in the New Kingdom, men and women began to share that position, as seen in the middle register, although the male figures stay in front of their female counterparts. The seated positions in the upper and middle register reiterate the symbolic meaning of dominance and power. As a result, Osiris, Hathor, Maya, and Tamyat are depicted as seating to emphasize their status. The costumes and hairstyles in their art also depict age and gender. During the Amarna period, it was popular for women to wear dresses which emphasized their form in pubic triangle, while men wore skirts with the region over their genitals being opaque. In terms of hairstyles, men generally had shorter hair than women, and similarly, children usually wore their hair short and above their shoulders. Whereas women wear their hair long, and as seen in the middle register with Maya's wife, the enveloping wig was worn by married women and completely covered the shoulders without any visible part. It was one out of the two most popular wig styles during this period. Now that we have historical context and information on the rules of art, we can apply that knowledge to analyze Maya Stila and examine the role of family in funerary rites. The translation of the hieroglyphics on the top register read, Osiris, Lord of Eternity, Great God, Lord of Abydos, Hathor at the head of Thebes. Maya and Tamiya give offerings to the gods to ask for protection in the afterlife. The second register depicts three standing men on the viewer right giving offerings to two seated figures on the viewer left. The hieroglyphics read, Draftsman Maya and his sister, Lady of the House Tamiat. 
In Egypt, the word sister referred to any female person in the household. This include mother, sister, daughter, wife, etc. The title lady of the house, however, points to the seated woman as Maya's wife, Tamiat. Lady of the house means a woman who was in charge of a household, typically a wife. As stated before, art clearly showed people's status. In this case, the seated Tamiat takes a higher position than the boys, meaning she is either their mother, dead, or both. The hieroglyphics name the three standing men as Yor, meaning Maya's, son Prenifer, his son Ramos, and his son Nemos. By the side of the seated people is a small child. She's probably Tamiat's daughter, Irina Fret. Strangely, Irina Fret is named as her daughter, possibly referring to Tamiat. This is odd since all the other children are shown using his as a possessive except for Irina Fret. What makes Irina Fred so special? She is the only figure on the stela still depicted as a juvenile, and she is the only child on the side of greater importance. She may be a child brought from a different marriage by Tamiat, thus specifically her daughter, or Irina Fred might be deceased, justifying her position on the viewer left since the dead have dominance over the living. The hieroglyphics in the middle register read, Presenting incense and libations, pure, pure to you, ka at the hands of your son. Egyptians believed the Ka was the spirit of the deceased person and traveled to the afterlife after death. The middle register shows that children were tasked with purifying and preparing the souls of their parents for the afterlife and ensuring parents got the proper offerings. Notice that there is no priest shown in the stela. The only humans shown are Maya and his family. This shows how important family was in local religion. Children were the main people who interacted with the dead, not a religious leader. Children had direct access to their parents and they were the main givers and recipients of the dead. The final register names Maya's children from eldest to youngest. We know that age was hierarchical and Egyptians favored older children to take up social welfare. The second register has Prenifer, meaning that he took on the main funerary duties. Notice the size differences on the third register. The male on the viewer left is the largest and the size decreases as it goes further right. Size in the stela shows age rather than status, so it's safe to assume the order of children is from eldest to youngest. All the children are shown with offerings from Maya and Tamiat. This means that every child was responsible for participating in funerary rites. While the oldest might have had the most duties, that does not exclude the other children from participating. In order to support our analysis of the stela, let's compare it with a similar object, the statue of Kedemun and his family. Maya's stela was created in limestone with different registers that include important gods and lots of children, whereas the Kedemun statue is depicted in a limestone sculpture with no gods and only one grandchild. Maya's stela was also found in Dero Medina, and Kedemun's statue is thought to be from the upper part of Egypt. Although the material and location may be different, they both contain important similarities. Both these images are from the New Kingdom in the 18th century, Kedemun representing the earlier half, and Maya representing the later half. In the top register of Maya's stela, we see Maya and Tamiya giving praise to the god Osiris and the goddess Hathor. In the statue of Kedemun and his family, gods are depicted in the inscriptions on clothing. Kedemun's wife, Nebit Unit, is named after the goddess Hathor and means Lady of Dendera. Her dress is important because it includes inscriptions that mention her wish to have a portion of the offers made to Hathor. In both images, we also see the wives reaching out to grasp their male counterparts' arms. This act represents the power dynamic between the husband and wife and how the husband is seen as the protector and head of the household. Gay Robbins elaborates on this idea and states that the forward position is the primary one and is occupied by the man while his wife or mother take the subordinate position behind him. Considering that most statues and stelae were owned by men, it is no surprise that the man took the prominent position on the sculpture. A big aspect in both images is the representation of small children. The statue of Kedemun and his family includes a small child in the middle of Kedemun and Nebit unit, which represents their grandchild, Mutnefret, daughter of Duetnefret. This practice is also represented in the stela of Maya and his wife, where a small child is shown standing beneath Tamiat, indicating that it is her daughter, Iron effort. Barbara Watterson explains children in art as significant and almost always depicted in family stele or statues. She describes how children join their parents on many special occasions. Various tomb paintings depict these children at feasts, dressed as miniature adults, sitting quietly and always well behaved. And that's exactly what we see in both these images. Maya Stila and Kedemun sculpture have a similar function because they are both created as funerary pieces and offerings to the gods. The stela of Maya and his family depict Maya and his wife giving offerings and praise to the god Osiris, who is the god of the underworld. Because Osiris is depicted, we can use our analysis to determine that this stela was most likely created as an offering in the tomb. The statue of Kedemun, Nebit Unit, and their grandchild Mutnefert was also created as a funerary statue by Kedemun's daughter, Duet Nefert. Duet Nefert commissioned the statue as a royal offering to the gods Osiris and Amen. 
It is a common practice for children to immortalize their parents in art so that they could continue in the next life. After comparing these images, we can better understand the family dynamic in ancient Egypt. There are specific elements of analysis, such as the placement of the wife and child, the similarities between clothing, as well as the references to important gods and goddesses. Family in Egypt was incredibly important. We can see from this dealer how children played a role in their parents' funerary rites. We see patterns of family connections throughout Egypt. Ketamun's statue backs up the evidence provided by Maya Stila and display how family was integral to the religious rites. Family acted as a cohesive unit which provided for and cared for each other in life and afterlife.